Today we're going to install the diverter kit for the grapple. This is what allows you to use one hydraulic circuit on the tractor to control both the dump curl as well as the clamps. The documentation says that it takes about one to two hours to do this install. I would say it's on the outside of that, at least the way I did. There's two major portions of the install. The first is the hydraulic. You do that where you install the diverter. You'll see this in a minute. The second portion is the electrical. Now there's two different ways to install the electrical. If you're unsure which one you need, go ahead and skip to the electrical portion of the installation and you'll kind of get a feel for which one you need for your tractor. Okay, enough talking for now. Let's get started on the install. Okay, Katril, today is the day to start installing our Artillion Diverter Kit. So we recently unboxed our new uh, grapple system and we need to work on our hydraulics such that we can actually grapple. Yeah, we can't, we can't clamp anything yet until we get some hydraulics ran. Now, you can use this Artillion diverter kit with any other a grapple system or anything that requires a third function hydraulics on these little deer tractors. So that's one of the reasons we wanted to put this as a separate video, not having anything to do with the grapple that we've got. This uh, will work well with any competitive grapple that is out there. It'll, there's also several other features that you might want on the front of your front end loader. And so this is a standalone kit. This is what comes in the kit, Catrille. Zip ties. Four hoses over here. This is what's going to go from the tractor all the way to the loader. The diverter valve itself, one circuit in, two circuits out. There's the two electrical solenoids. These are the hoses that are going to connect to the tractor's hydraulics. Quick connects there. This is not included in the diverter kit. This is a splitter to allow you to have two clamps. Okay? So we'll have to replace this manifold right here with this manifold, I believe. So it's like a headphone splitter. If you're listening to music on your phone and both of us want to listen to it, you, we can. And here's some of the instructions that came with it. Okay, we'll be working through those details. All right, step one. Turn off tractor. Check. Step two. Set a loader to the ground. Actuate all hydraulic controls to relieve hydraulic pressure throughout the system. Okay, that sounds really complicated, and so that's why we wanted to show it here. It's not that complicated. You can control the hydraulics on these units with the tractor off. So I'm just going to slowly let it down. And then I'm going to run the hydraulics in all directions. Until, until it doesn't move anymore at all. So that should relieve all the pressure on the hydraulics. Cut and remove cable ties at both ends of the protective webbing on the loader hoses. Okay. Before cutting, note the position of the ends of the protector. Okay, it's right there. Now before we get started with this, it would make logical sense to me to disconnect these hoses first. But I think maybe what's going on here is by disconnecting this end first, we might be able to ho hold those hoses up and that oil may go back into the reservoir and we won't have as much leaking. The instructions don't say to actually disconnect this down here until step seven. Slide the upper end of the hose protector back enough to achieve access to the two curl cylinder hose connections to the loader lines. Okay. These should be the two upper connections of the stack. They are. And you can see the little yellow and black zip ties right here to provide that indicator. Okay, anytime you're working with any sort of hydraulic fitting like this, you want to make sure that you put a wrench on both sides of it. Maybe we'll do this bottom one first. I think we have a little easier access. This larger wrench for me is 13 sixteenths. The smaller wrench is 3 quarters. And you need to have them against each other because you can't just loosen one without, the, without holding against it with the other one. That's usually the way I do it, is like this, break the, to break it, grab both of them in your hands and you can work like that. I don't expect it to be really tight because of the way these fittings are made. You know, you don't, you don't have to make them really tight. Once you get it broke loose, you, you don't necessarily need the backing wrench like I've shown here. There we go, it's going to start leaking. Now disconnect the opposite ends of the hoses from the tractor. Okay. This is just normal loader disconnect right here. But we don't actually have to connect the, disconnect the red and blue ones, just the yellow and blacks. Because that's really the only valves we're working with here today. Slide the two hoses out of the protective hose webbing. Okay. The 
cleanest method is to pull them up and out. These yeah. Hoses, these hoses will not be reused. We will use them in the future probably if we ever take this diverter off. All right, install new 8 inch cable ties at each end of the hose protector around the two remaining hoses. Be sure the hose protector is back in its original location. Do not include the two open hard line ends that feed the dump slash curl cylinders. Okay. So we'll put that protector right up here on this end. A little closer to the end than last time. And then once we get those tightened up, we can take our cutoffs here. That was the end of part one. Sweet! All right, part two. Install the hydraulic valve with pre-assembled edge clamp mounting system and the gang of two hoses with solenoid wire harness. So the black solenoids are to the back. There we go. Okay. It said just kind of arbitrarily, right? Yes. I think that was the term it used. We're just kind of putting it up there in general for now. Step two, insert the gang of two hoses with solenoid wire harness through the loader hose guides and run the gang alongside the existing loader hoses down to the tractor disconnect, quick disconnect manifold. Run these hoses through this guide. Okay. Attach the two hoses to the diverter valve matching the number tags. Tighten the connections, do not over tighten. Okay. What I've done is I've left these on as long as I could to keep them as clean as possible. But now it's time for them to come off. It set up something about the numbers. There mm -hmm. it says P2 and there it says P1. So I'm just going to tighten this diverter on here enough that it will stop scaring me thinking I'm going to make it fall. So we'll start with the bottom one. My dad always said start with the hardest to get to. It is very important to get these started straight. I'm actually holding on to the other end of the hose, and that way I can, can kind of feel when it's freely moving versus not freely moving. Okay, so this is an 11 sixteenths inch wrench. Okay, so again, just line it right up like that. I don't know, it's kind of shadowy down there probably for you. Shouldn't need to overdo it. Route the solenoid wire harness plugs beneath the valve and insert the two electrical connectors into the two solenoids on the diverter valve until the locking tabs engage. It doesn't really show which one's which. They look to be identical. Both of them have the white wire on top, so it shouldn't matter which one's which. Install your colored dust caps from your original hydraulic hoses over the dis quick disconnect fittings of the new hoses, according to the labels on the new hoses. Mine are three years old, so they've seen some wear. Yellow, black. I may have to get some new dust caps at some point. I believe Ken has some at boltonhooks.com. Here it says tighten after install. So those are still loose right there. Connect the hoses to the tractor and situate the hoses so they, sm they flow smoothly alongside the existing hoses. The reason I wanted to tighten that was because I wanted to do it before I got the black one. Okay. Now, Katrill, I'm not really sure about the positioning of this. You know, the way they said it in those instructions was to find this natural fit. Well, I've still got these two hoses outside of this little holder here where they usually fit. If I push this down any further, though, you won't be able to get those hoses in there. Mm -hmm. and nor would you be able to get them out of there. I need to be able to get them out of there when I take the loader off because these hoses aren't long enough to remain in here and reach the tractor when that arm's all the way up. Sometimes these loader hoses before would get down here so far they would get into the front tire if you didn't have them in there. I'm a little torn as to how to do this. It's possible I could bend this holder a little bit out such that they could it'd be easier to get this in and out of. I think it would still hold in there. Let me grab this with this wrench, see. I can just bend that out. Maybe that will allow these to go in there. And just, they don't need to be held in, you know, tight or anything. They just need to stay. But again, this may take some trial and error uh, for for everybody involved, because every machine may be a little bit different. Even other people's 1025Rs might have slightly longer hoses. I don't know. And certainly the 120R loader, the newer loader, would have different 
would look a little bit different in the way this mast is made and everything. But if we do have to move it, it's not a big deal, right? We'll just come back at a later date and uh, readjust based on what we've learned. That is the end of part two. Great. Now on to part three. Install the gang of four hoses with front manifold. So that would be like this, okay? But we need to take a break here because we don't need to use this manifold. We need the other one that has the four, the splitter. That's exactly right. So we've got to figure out how to take this apart. Okay, so what I've done here to take this manifold apart, I just took this bolt out of that manifold and the whole thing falls apart. And now we have two hoses with the quick disconnects. So we just need to take these two quick disconnects off and then we'll be able to connect those hoses right in here. So this larger one is 7 eighths, smaller one here is 9 sixteenths. That's all it'll be to take that quick disconnect off. This is a flare fitting here, but it has a non-flare connector here. But when we connect it into this splitter, it will be flare again, so we won't have any trouble with leaks there. I guess I'll put this right in here. I'm a little unsure where to put it. I could put it a little bit off-center, perhaps, and that might help protect a little bit. I don't know. These are just traditional hose clamps. There's nothing special about it. There is a nice piece of rubber around it to kind of protect the existing paint. I'm just not sure what angle we want this thing at yet. I'm not sure uh, whether we want it centered or off to the side. Well, it can be moved easily, so we'll go ahead and tighten it up here. This is where I'm going to get the loader and the brush. It's the part of the loader that's just really going to take more beating. Instead of this straight blade screwdriver, you could use a, a nut driver or a socket. It would be a lot easier. But it's natural for me to show you the most difficult way to do something, right? Now, these are clamped right on top of those other lines. There's a plastic piece of plastic here, and under those plastic are those lines right there. But I don't think we're going to put enough pressure on with this hose clamp to collapse those lines, so I don't think there's really any danger there. Okay, so now our task is to route these hoses from here, down there where their ends are, up to here. And it said in the instructions, maybe just to take off this protective cover. I think maybe we ought to just connect these down here first, Katrina. Okay. Because this will get us right back to where the other manifold was. 9 sixteenths and 11 sixteenths. Now, just to reiterate, you won't have this double manifold, you won't have any of that splitter concept if you've only got one clamp. The only reason we've done all this is because we're doing two clamps. If you have three clamps, you have to have a triple splitter, which I believe would be these two holes right here. So now we have to run these hoses up through here in a way that's not going to cause any trouble to anybody. So I wanted to run behind that hose, behind these other two, right up along all of these uh, permanent steel lines. The second one should be easier because at least I know where I'm going. They're saying not to tighten those yet, which makes perfect sense. Okay, so we've got the hoses ran up through here how we want them ran. These are those two long ones. As they suggested, we took the uh, protector off of there. Now, we need to put that protector back on before we finish our routing. A1B1, A2B2, that's the end we need to have together. And then the other end on these says two dump and two curl. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, we will run this up around here. They want you to put A2 on first. The twos are the smaller ones. They want you to put B2 on next. I think it was A1 next, I hope. The instruction said to tighten each one as you went, tighten each one fully as you went. Oh, well that would have made it a lot easier, wouldn't it? Tell you what, that may be enough so to at least take A1 off. If I was doing this again, I might actually take the side of the hood off. It would give you a little more access in here. Did they say A1 or B1 next? Um, it's both twos and then A1, B1. Oh. The ones are 11 sixteenths. The twos are 9 sixteenths. I think it is pretty important that we put the twos on first before the ones. So certainly that order is relevant. Now the next step is the dump and curl. And they said that the curl was the bottom most here. So this is the curl. So we follow that. That's the top line. There's plenty of hose length here. It's just sometimes a little bit cumbersome to work with. Now there's an O-ring connection in this one, so as soon as we get it snug, it should be fine. Now you can see that that's not lined up very good, so it'll have to be in line before it 
things. Now I suspect we need to put some of those zip ties. So at this stage, we're supposed to be done with the hydraulics. All right. So it's a good time for a test run, right? Yes. So what we expect here is we're not going to be able to control the actual grapple. I mean, look, we don't even have the hoses hooked up here. Nor can we actually switch the diverter. So there's no way we could even, you know, try to open it. But what we should be able to do is still raise and lower the loader. Okay. And we should still be able to dump and curl. Okay. And since we can dump and curl and raise the loader, we should also be able to check for leaks. All right. So let's fire it up to see if we haven't broken anything. good yeah it looks good as far as function now we just need to see if there's any leakage basically I'm running my fingers around any of these fittings on the undersides of them there should be no liquid anywhere oops what did I feel there I felt liquid now the question is whether that was already there or not uh, it's possible that was left over from you know our tightening or something before I didn't see any drip that time I did not see any drip either I'm not seeing any new liquid there so I think we're in good shape got one of these hose kits here with each clamp not really a lot of instruction needed here yellow port black port 530 seconds Allen wrench there Okay, the yellow port is the longer hose, so that's easy enough. So I just this was just hand tightened in here, that way you can take it off. Not exactly sure which size this is. It doesn't feel like the 15 millimeter fits it perfect. 45 in the back hole. It's another way to identify the way these have been assembled. 45 is on the black hose. The 90s on the yellow hose. Well, hey there, Katrina. Oi! So then we plug in here. Last step, Katrina. Oh, wow. Okay, we got a couple of grease fittings on each side. Make sure we got some grease on them. Look at that. I've got the whole tractor torn apart, right? We're going to start on the electrical now. There's really two pieces to the electrical. One, we have to put a button right up here to be able to actuate the diverter kit. And the other thing we have to do is find power such that we can power the whole electrical system. There are two separate electrical options available when you buy your diverter kit. One plugs right into the 12 volt adapter right here. The other approach just has wires and a fuse stuck in it right here. This is the general purpose version, right? This will allow it to work on the 1023E or potentially on any other tractor. I went back and forth on which one to get. Um, the easiest to install, obviously, is the pigtail. Um, but I'm not really comfortable with that. There's not a lot of space there, and I may want to use that outlet for something else anyway. As we've talked before, I'm probably a glutton for punishment. So I chose the hardwire version. So my intention is to wire it into the fuse box right here. And I've actually ordered some parts to do that. But wouldn't you know it, a customer calls, and they've got a desperate situation. And that situation needs the grapple later today. So I've got to find a way to wire this. I'm going to come up with a way that I can route these wires like they're going to be routed under the floorboard for the final solution. But then I'm going to take these power wires and I'm going to wire a 12 volt connector on there, run it all the way back and plug it into the 12 volt plug. And then later we're going to wire to the fuse box. I've got parts on the way for that but they don't arrive till tomorrow. So let's get started. Okay so we've got the push button here. It's going to go on here. This wire has got to go through the little grommet here, down under the fender, not on the front of the fender like this, but under the fender. The connector here needs to be as close as possible to that. We just have to be careful. We have to do our best to protect that from the pedal here, from any you know weeds or brush or anything that might hit under there. Now, connected to that is the power wire. Okay, so assume we run that in here somewhere, like that. That power wire eventually is going to come across here up to the fuse box. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to run this permanently 
under here some way. We believe we have enough wire left that we can run back on top of the floorboard all the way back here to the power adapter. Okay, we'll start by feeding this right down through that grommet. We can bring that grommet up a little bit to kind of see what it looks like in there, right? But it's, it's got enough room that we can feed that right down through there. Well, even with the knob off, I'm not able to get that fuse connector through this grommet. I don't see any choice but to cut it off. I'm not going to need this fuse anyway because I'm going to wire it to the fuse box eventually. Okay, now that we've got this through the grommet, we'll not worry any more about the positioning of the actual button for now. The interesting part is actually running the wire. So I'm just going to feed it down through here. Anytime you're trying to push wire through something, it never goes exactly where you really want it to. So this can be a little frustrating. Got it where we kind of want it. Now I'll pull that other wire right on through with it. Now, this is hardly long enough where we're positioned right now. See, it's coming out right here. I'd really like it to be all the way up here. So we'll, we'll see what we've got to work with there. That cable runs right along the front of the tire here in the fender along with these hard hydraulic lines and that's really all the spare cable I could find. I really can't stretch it any more than that. And I'll be honest it's about three inches shorter than what I would like. I would love to have that connector all the way out here so for ease of connectivity. I'll put a couple more zip ties up through there it's really hard to show you. It's in there behind that fender. And I'm going to try to make sure I protect it behind these hard lines as they go up to that SCV. But it's going to be really hard to show you that on video, so I'll have to do that without your involvement there. So the next step is to run our power. Okay, so here's my current plan of attack. Got the little connector right down here. That's as far as it'll reach. I'm running this wire, the power wire, attaching it here, this little solid piece, running it right up over the frame here. Now they provided some very nice rubberized tape. My cut isn't very nice, but anyway, it's really thick rubberized tape to protect that. And I looked at the way the floorboard's made. It does not even come close to the frame. My objective here was to get over to this wiring harness as quickly as I could. My thought process was that the wiring harness will naturally be in the safest place on the tractor. So that's all the permanent wiring I really need to do for, for today. Okay, so this is our in a hurry solution here. We've got a couple of barrel connectors we just wired onto the end of that wire. I got to thinking it would probably be useful for me to put together a video showing you how to get the floorboard off you really do have a lot of visibility in here when you do that. It just doesn't fit with this video. We just don't have time to do that here. Okay, so that's going to have to do it for today's electrical work. You can probably see the wire. I got to hide it right under the rubber there, wrap it around here, and then let it come out. Get it all plugged in here. Every time I test it, we should be able to hear it and actually feel it right here in this solenoid. So that's when you know it's working. You can do that test all along once you've got the wiring done just to make sure that your wiring is good. Let's see, where were we now? Oh yeah, we had to shortcut our electrical setup so that we could go do some work with the grapple. Oh my goodness, by the way, almost six hours of grapple work. It was great. You'll see it in an upcoming video. This thing is really amazing. Meanwhile, it's time to get back to the electrical and get it done right the way we want it. Now we're going to reroute that directly to the fuse box which is right behind here. Okay let's get to it. Side panel. Now we can see the fuse box. I'm going to take off this back panel right here so that we can reroute the wire. That's the only disassembly I'll need at this point after I've already done the rest of the wiring. 
I'll undo the temporary routing that I did. Now I'm going to route right up alongside this other wiring harness. I don't think there's a lot of activity going on in here that's going to cause any danger to this wire. It remains covered all the time, so even a power washer or something like that shouldn't cause any problem. Okay, i got several zip ties in here. We'll just cut these ends off. Okay, the fuse block is secured with two small bolts. The heads and nuts are 10 centimeters. So basically I use the end wrench on the back side, socket on the front side. Now try to be careful not to drop this nut. Because if you drop that nut down in there, sometimes it doesn't go to the ground. I can tell you from experience, the last time I had this off for inspection, it went down in the middle there and I had a hard time finding it and getting it out. Sometime you'll have to ask a trill about that. Okay, well we've got the fuse block off now and we can turn it around here. See this 15 here? This is the 12 volt outlet that's on the back and then there's an empty block right below that. We're going to use that. I've got these wire strippers right here. These are my favorite kind of wire strippers by the way. Um, I've tried two or three other styles. I like these the most by far. Just put it on there and strip it right off. I'll put a link to those strippers in the description. Okay. This was the magical part we had to wait two days for. According to the folks on GreenTractorTalk.com, this will fit right in here and lock. My thinking is that I could use some of this heat shrink tape to cover that. And I'll slide it way back down here for now. That way, if it doesn't work, I can cut that whole part out of the video, right? Now, someone advised using some special crimper to crimp this wire down. And I'm sure I should. But that just doesn't feel necessary. I've got six of these little connectors. They were 59 cents each at Napa. I only needed one. But I thought, well, I had two other thoughts in mind. Number one, I might destroy one or two just trying to get this to work. And the second thought was, there are a few other empty fuse slots in, the, in this box. I might eventually want to wire up something else. I'll leave the part number to this in the description below. So neighbor Lee gave me this uh, heat gun. I had never used one until he gave it to me, so, but I found that it works really great on this shrink tape. Takes it just a little while to heat up, but not long, it's already warm. I think that does the trick. Now, while that's cooling a minute, we need to figure out a place to connect our ground. I've got this cheap little multimeter. This may have even been free from Harbor Freight, you know, one of those free deals they have. Um, but it works perfectly for what we're needing. We don't need anything exact. So what I'm doing is I've plugged the power side into this fuse that we're going to be using, to the power side of that fuse, and now I'm just searching for a bolt somewhere or something. I have these old package of terminals. This probably is 20 years old, but there's some ring terminals here that I think would work very well if I can find a small bolt to put them on. So when I'm looking around, I see a small bolt down here. The question is, is it grounded? So again, I've got the red on the power. If I touch that bolt, it shows 12.9 volts. So that's pretty good. I think we have found a suitable ground right there. So I'll put one of those ring terminals on the black end of this wire and route it right back down here and plug it in right there. Okay, I've got my wire cut just to the right length to hook to that bolt down there. Hopefully you can see that bolt that I'm gonna hook to. Get in here and I'll strip just a little bit of this wire off. It doesn't take very much. I always like to spin it just a little bit to keep it from coming apart. Here's my ring connector. Probably an antique ring connector. I can use the ends of my same stripper for the crimping. I guess because it's an antique. 
back when they made things simple and effective instead of complex. Look at that. Fits right on there. Okay, so back up to the power side, we've got our connector as we've seen. This is the way I'm going to stick it in with this little knob here toward the inside. So we'll stick it in like that. Now I didn't really necessarily, I mean it feels it's locked, it won't come back out now, but I wasn't really confident in it until such time that I shoved the fuse in. And then it seemed even more rock solid like it wasn't going to come out. So now all we have to do is go back together. We'll put the fuse block back on with the two bolts. And we should be ready to go. Now when I took this off before for my inspection to see what kind of connector I needed and everything, I found the fuse block a bit hard to put back on. I found it harder to put back on than to take off actually. Just because I had to get that nut started in there on the back side. The newer units don't have these bolts up here. They have uh, quicker connectors than these bolts. So those of you that have the second half 2017 and newer units, you should be thankful for that. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but it is just a nice little upgrade. We really do appreciate Artillion providing the grapple for us. We've loved their products for years. We've had the set of forks, we've had the horse blinders up there on the lights, we've had the wings and the rubber cutting edge on the snow blade. A lot of Artillion products have been here for years. We're now happy to have a grapple. Okay, we gotta get to our project. We gotta go. That's it for the installation. Now we gotta go use this grapple. I'm excited about that. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.